welcome we are visiting the provisions of the constitution the contract act in the context of the world agreement as has been the part of the provisions of the code of criminal procedure so the agreement in the context of criminal proceedings an agreement in the context of civil proceedings have their distinct domains there are many parallel but differentiable features of the agreements as far as the civil proceedings are concerned and as are taken in the criminal proceedings therefore today let us visit chapter 2 of the indian contract act in chapter 1 we have seen it was simple regarding the communications of proposal acceptance revocation of proposal revocation of acceptance and when it becomes a promise but yet these promises as such have not been given the title of the agreement or contract now here in chapter 2 in continuity and in the background of the provisions of chapter 1 the further legislative sanctions are in chapter 2 of contracts voidable contracts and void contracts the voidable contracts and void contracts in civil law has very specific meanings and implications however in criminal law the voidable contracts and void contracts get very different manifestations therefore to have an appreciation of the voidable contracts and void contracts in criminal proceedings before that it is desirable that we should first have a full comprehension of the civil implications of the concepts of contracts voidable contracts and void agreements today in this chapter i will be focusing only upon the first four sections 110 what agreements or contracts who are competent to contract what is a sound mind for the purposes of contracting and 13 the consent as it is defined we will first appreciate these provisions let us begin with the text of section 10 of chapter 2 titled of contracts voidable contracts and void contracts section 10 is with respect to what agreements or contracts so in a way here it is being defined as to which agreements become contracts in common parlance it appears as if every agreement is a contract no section 10 provides that all agreements are contracts if so immediately all agreements are contracts which remains a common sense and common, common acceptance but here in this section immediately it is provided all agreements are contracts if they are made by the free consent of the parties competent to contract so see the agreements will be contracts if they are made number 1 by free consent of the parties who are competent to contract so who is competent who is not competent is also one aspect and what is free consent as well is the aspect see all agreements are contracts if they are made by free consent of parties competent to contract comma for a lawful consideration so things are not stopping here that there should be this agreement shall be made by free consent by competent persons no we have to proceed a step ahead as well and it is for lawful consideration so agreements which are without considerations as such are not contracts 
they may agree that whenever you will come to my home i will serve you with a cup of tea this in itself is just a agreement if it is taken to be an agreement but it is without consideration so all agreements number one it should be agreement agreement would mean there should be a proposal and there should be an acceptance proposals are not revoked lawfully and consents are also not revoked lawfully so if there is an agreement which means there is an proposal and agreement then consent now these agreements will become contract now first situation is that this is to be by free mind the consent should be free and then the consent is to be given by a competent person who is competent who is not competent also to be determined and whether it is a pre consent or not is also to be determined and further for a lawful consideration see the consideration is to be lawful and with a lawful object so that consideration also if it is there if even if lawful consideration is there but the object is not lawful even then such agreements are not going to become the context see all agreements are contracts if number 1 they are made by free consent of parties number 2 competent to contract number 3 for a lawful consideration number 4 lawful object things doesn't stop up till here agreements has to be by free consent by competent parties for lawful consideration and for lawful object and are not here by expressly declared to be void so there are five distinct test stones there are five ways to have the test for the agreement to become a contract so if agreement is to be brought in the category of a contract then number 1 it should be by free consent number 2 it would be by the competent person number 3 it should be for lawful consideration number 4 it should be for lawful object and number 5 it has not been expressly declared to be void now these five conditions are still presuming there is an agreement an agreement would mean there has to be a proposal and there has to be an acceptance so in all there become seven stages proposal acceptance free consent competency to contract lawful consideration and lawful object and the same is not declared as void so by these seven tests we have to reach at the conclusion whether or not the agreement is a contract agreement itself is one aspect and further there are five steps agreement to reach at would mean a proposal and consent and this same to become a contract would mean a free consent competence to contract lawful consideration lawful object and that the same has not been expressly declared why then nothing herein contained shall affect any law in force in india and not thereby expressly repealed by which any contract is required to be made in writing or in the presence of the witnesses or any law relating to the registration of the documents so things doesn't stop at those seven tests 
to make an agreement proposal and the acceptance then it should be by free consent by competence to contract lawful consideration lawful object and that has not been expressly already declared as void then further it is said nothing here in contained shall affect any law in force in india so if there is any law in india regarding the contracts which require that it shall be made in writing so if there is a legal provision in any law that contract shall be in writing then that also will be enforceable effective and unless and until the same will be in writing then the agreement will not become a contract or in the presence of witnesses and if there is a requirement that such agreement in writing is to be witnessed by say one two or any number of witnesses and if that is not complied with then as well the agreement will not become a contract or any law relating to the registration of the documents so here there are three further situations which are taken into consideration by section 10 of the indian contract act so this that way it makes a list of 10 such stones these 10 such stones are two with respect to the agreement five with under section 10 itself and three further which are recognized by section 10 however the same are to be there in any other law enforceable law so let us table it these 10 ten, 10 ten touchstones number 1 proposal number 2 acceptance number 3 free consent number 4 competency to contract number 5 lawful consideration 6 lawful object 7th non declaration being void then to be in writing then to be witnessed by witnesses and finally its registration aspect so we as lawyers when will be in the process of adjudications we have to have testing for the lawful agreements as contracts by these 10 steps now see section 11 goes a step ahead who are competent to contract so all these 10 things which we have read here in section 10 are going to be properly legislated there are specific provisions of the contract act itself which well defines these situation first being is competent to contract every person is competent to contract see this act was enacted in 1870 and at that time this right of every individual to contract was recognized and was given a legislative sanction therefore each person was recognized having a capacity to contract however this capacity to contract of every person is qualified by saying who is age of the majority according to law so first restriction or first condition or first classification regarding the competency of anyone to contract comes to be the age therefore age is recognized as a 
realistic barometer and this barometer classifies the persons in two categories those who are major and those are minor now what is majority as well is being kept here open for the law saying according to the law to which he is subject so any person if he is in a state a if has the law regarding majority at the age of 21 and other person b who is in another state if there the majority age is say 18 then here the right to contract the competency to contract for a will be that only if a is above 21 years then is competent in B, if he is above 18 years, he is competent to contract. Now, every person is competent to contract who is of the age of majority according to the law to which he is subject, comma, and who is of sound mind. So, the second restriction is that minority and majority classification. The second situation is soundness of mind. So, competency of contract under section 11 is having first restriction, first touchstone of the majority. The second is of soundness of mind. And the third is non, not disqualified from contracting by any lot which is a subject. So, see, regarding competency as well, there are three touchstones there are three tests number one is the majority number two is soundness of mind and number three is the disqualification provisions of law to which the particular person is subject to so when we will be reading the touchstones the restrictions the conditions of section 10 regarding competent to contract, then we have to be in terms of section 11 to have a threefold test. First test will be the majority, the second test will be of soundness of mind and third test will be the lawful disqualifications if any. Step ahead. What is a sound mind for the purpose of contracting? It is a clause which is taking us to the mental state. We have seen that in criminal law, mensaria is the ingredient. We have also seen that evidence can be given regarding mental states as well. Now that aspect of leading evidence regarding the mental state of a person becomes more important here in the context of contracts as well. In the context of civil rights as well, civil litigations as well, the test of mental state, the evidence regarding mental state is of equal importance as who is a sound mind, what is a sound mind for the purpose of the contract is provided here in section 12. What it says, a person is said to be of a sound mind for the purpose of making a contract if at the time when he makes it, so soundness of a person is to be tested in respect of the moment of time when the contract is made. He is capable of understanding. Now see, what soundness of mind is being legislated here. It should be the capability of understanding it and of forming a rational judgment. So, 
it is the understanding and it is going to be the rational judgment so see for this soundness of a mind we are firstly taking it to be an understanding then it is further restricted further condition further confined further brought within this narrow zone of rational judgment now here it is not a reasoning it is not a logic it is a judgment so rational judgment and understanding so from understanding we have to reach at the rational judgment the judgment will follow the understanding but only the rational judgments not irrational judgments so a person is said to be of sound mind for the purpose of making a contract if at the time when he makes it at the time when it makes it he is capable of understanding the word adjective used is he when we'll go to the general clauses act and general interpretation he also would include she and now also a non gender as well transgender as well will be included in he and sometimes when we know there would be only legal persons then it also will include the institutionalized the institutions as well so it will also would mean it so he will be she it will be transgender it will be it anyway is capable of understanding it and of forming a rational judgment for what as to its effect upon his interests so the understanding of the person is to be of the level and degree of forming a rational judgment for what regarding the effects effects of what effect of the consent to be given for the contract to and regarding his interests so what it is being presumed here is that every individual is competent to contract but he should be of sound mind and soundness of mind would mean that he is always conscious regarding his own interests so what is being presumed here is that every individual who is competent to make a contract should be of a sound mind and soundness of mind is having a test stone of his understanding to form a rational judgment as to the effect of his consent upon his own interests so while we will be litigating while we will be having a pleading or a defense in respect of the validity of a contract on the ground of competency or incompetency of the particular person it will take us to the understanding of forming judgment rational judgment regarding the effect of the consent of the concerned person upon his own interests so person mind and interests of the person here legislative wisdom legislative insight legislative philosophy is that we shall presume that every adult person is of a sound mind when he understands and forms a rational judgment regarding his own interests 
this presumption this insight this philosophy this policy deserves to be visited very closely we as students of law we as law scholars and we as advocates have to think seriously and we have to absorb this philosophy this understanding this legislative policy which is approaching human beings in the categories of adults and minors and adults in the categories of e sound and unsound minds and soundness of mind is being classified as which understands and makes rational judgments regarding his own interests think those who are not conscious of their own interests and think among us them category of persons who are illiterate or ignorant how the ignorance of a person regarding his own interests is to be adjudicated is the question with which i am stopping here for today and tomorrow we will continue from this phase and stage of the legislative policy which has been given the seal of law effectiveness of law regarding the soundness of mind in the form of rational judgments regarding one's own interests thank you thank you sir